Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And in this episode, we're going to continue our conversation about Universal Orlando, vacationing at Universal Orlando, doing a little bit of comparing to Disney and offering you some tips and our advice. I'm so happy this week to be joined by uh, a bunch of our Universal experts. Uh, we have Dreams Unlimited Travel agent and host of the Sea Disney podcast, Federico Agar. Hola, hola. Thank you for having me. We have Dreams Unlimited Travel agent and panelist on the DCL Fan Podcast, and who looks like he's going to get very serious. He just took his glasses off, Chris Borbeck. Hi there. And our producer extraordinaire and host of the Diz Unlimited Universal Podcast show about universal things, Greg Williams. I like that one better than the actual one. We'll change it. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot easier. Universal things don't get technical with us. Yeah, really. Thank <laughs> you, uh, guys, for being here and participating. Thank you, everybody at home, for joining us. Um, we truly appreciate you spending your time with us. Well, we did a previous show about Universal concentrating on the theme parks and touching on sort of the uh, high-level topics comparing contrasting Disney to Universal, what each vacation might look like for you and, and the important things that are different. And now we want to talk about hotels. We want to talk about where you might stay. Okay, huge topic, a lot of information. We can't possibly go into everything, but um, there's some important stuff. There's some high-level stuff we want you to know about. Disney hotels versus Universal hotels. I'm going to let Chris get started. Um, kind of the big thing is that Universal Orlando doesn't own their hotels or operate their hotels. So I want to explain that to folks so they know what to expect there. Yeah, I'm just going to start off with a simple number. There are eight hotels that are adjacent, very close to the uh, Universal, two Universal theme parks and, and the Volcano Bay Water Park. Um, and they classify them in different categories, much like Disney does. Universal has four categories. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, Universal has four. Disney, of course, has three. Um, so they're value, prime value, preferred, and then premier. Um, and as John mentioned, Universal does not own their hotels. I believe they're all managed and run by Lowe's. Um, so the premier resorts, Lowe's actually puts its name on. So it's uh, Portofino Bay is a Lowe's Portofino Bay. And I remember when I was first going, I'm going, hold on, am I not staying at Universal? Yes, they're still Universal. They're connected. Um, and, but they're not, they're just not owned by Universal. There are a couple of things that, that, that makes different. For example, your room key isn't just your, and give you enter. So you will get a bunch of tickets after you check in at the hotel, you then have to get your park tickets. You go to a different desk in the hotel and get your park tickets and you'll have, uh, your express pass tickets and your, so you end up with all these tickets. I always tell people, carry a, like, a lanyard. I know it looks awful, but you're going to be using these things all the time. Carry them around with you. It makes it much easier. But it, there's those kinds of things that make it you know, a little bit different. It's not all, not all tightly integrated the way, the way Disney's are. But the hotels are really, really lovely. Um, and, and we mentioned on the previous podcast, Universal is just much smaller than you're not walking. You can literally walk to most of the hotels and in most cases, it's a very pleasant walk. For example, the Hard Rock is is probably well. I what we're going to put on on the Dream site, but uh, it, it's this great page that tells you how long it is to walk, how long it is to take a bus, how long it is, the different ways of getting there. A bunch of them have a water taxi, but to get from Hard Rock, it's it's only a couple minute walk to get to the front gates. It's it's just lovely. So if you're one of those people who like when it's boiling hot in the middle of the day, you want to go take a break, you can easily do that. It's really, really lovely. And and as I said, the uh, the hotels are, are really, really well done. One other thing that I'll mention before I let Federico give his thoughts is they also have different room types, and particularly at the value and prime value uh, uh, side, they have different room types. So at uh, Surfside and Dockside, which are their value resorts, they have these family suites which are a little bit bigger, gives you a little bit more space and are still at that value price. Um, 
I haven't stayed in one, but they're they're just lovely. What a lovely way for a family to be able to spend time and and not all be just crammed into a, a, a small place. So there there are kind of more options that way. Absolutely, and one of the things you know, being in the business and being around for a million years, <laughs> we've seen. I've seen Universal has really. Um, up their game when it comes to their hotels. Their hotels used to be a little bit on the plain side. Yeah, they had theming and they had names and you know blah blah blah, all these things. But they've really, with the more recent edition of hotels, they've really upped their game when it comes to theming and it comes to accommodations. So that brings me to Federico. Federico, let's talk a little bit about um, hotel choice. All right, so you've got different categories and obviously price comes into play when it comes to these hotels. What other things should people consider with a universal stay? What hotel they're gonna choose? So I think one of the things that makes Universal different is that each hotel has things that are more appealing to different demographics or different types of families or travelers. So, for example, one of the, one of the things that I'd like um, to add what of what uh, Chris just said, one of the things that I like about Universal hotels is that they are, and I'm sorry if I'm not being or using the correct. Uh, words, but it, it doesn't. They don't feel so secluded as the Disney hotels. For example, if you go to a, a value resort at Walt Disney World, like the All Stars, and you want to walk around outside of the hotel, or you need to buy something, you're gonna have to get a car or an Uber to go outside of Walt, Walt Disney World to do that. As in Universal, for example, with the um, value resorts like the Endless Summer, those hotels are like in the middle of the city, you know? So you can leave your hotel and even though they have transportation to Universal and it's gonna take you like five minutes on a bus to get to the theme parks, you're gonna be able to leave your hotel and go to a pharmacy or go to a grocery store or whatever things you may need on your vacation. So I, what I always tell my clients is, if you wanna do some shopping, if you need to buy things um, that you're not gonna get in a theme park, it's always good to do that when you're staying in the universal part of your trip because it's going to be easier to move around and to find other things when you're staying in universal and to go back to your question john i think that is that is one of the great things about maybe not the teaming is as good as you can find in disney hotels and their storytelling is not going to be as well done as in Disney, but you're going to be able to find resorts that accommodate different families and different um, different styles of travelers. So, for example, if you're a solo traveler or if you're traveling with your couple, then staying at Aventura Hotel will be great because it's a small, it's just one simple building and it's going to be easier to move around. It's modern. It has a great rooftop with a bar and it's close to other universal hotels where you can find different uh, forms of tra transportation to go to the theme parks. But if you're staying with a family with younger kids, going to uh, Cabana Bay is going to be great because you're going to have a huge pools, lazy river. You're going to have bowling. Is bowling, that yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a lot of entertainment. Um, I have a to, malt shop in there, can, for goodness sakes. You can get a, a, get a Sunday. It's awesome. Yeah, so I think Universal may be not as great as Disney in terms of teaming, but they do a great job in terms of the amenities and the things that each hotels offer to make them different to one another and to help you accommodate the things that make sense on your vacation. I, and I we think... should also mention, John, that you do get uh, early entry into the theme parks. So it's an hour early into one of the two theme parks. And as we all know, if if you are willing to get up on early on your vacation, that time can be incredibly precious and just really gives you a, a head start on your theme park day. Um, you're able to knock off a whole bunch of things with just fewer people 
in in the parks and amongst the parks, which is a real advantage. And you get that on all the Universal uh, uh, hotels. And I think Absolutely. with the theming, I, I, I really I, I see Fetty's standpoint on it, but I, I think it's more of a 50 50 split on their hotels, because to me, uh, Portofino is one of the most beautiful hotels in Orlando. Yeah. And, you know, I would I would stack it right up next to the Polynesian as one of the best themed hotels in Orlando. And I think the same thing about Cabana Bay, that that hotel was perfect when it opened and it is still perfect with its theming. And I think Sapphire Falls is themed extremely well too. Uh, you know, Hard Rock, I guess it like follows that theme, whether or not it, I necessarily agree with it, but I, I think Aventura is like kind of the, is the odd duck out where it's just like, Oh, okay. It's just kind of a minimalist tower and that's all it is. But uh, there, there is theming in there. It just might not be as bold as you necessarily want it yes. to be. You might not see oversized Disney objects. Uh, it, more, They're more going for, I feel like, vibes necessarily than themes. Yes, I think the, the word I, I was trying to use is the storytelling because I yeah. think, yes, they do have great team in Portofino is a beautiful hotel, one of the most beautiful hotels I've ever been to. But Disney has this storytelling that I never seen done into a hotel or into a building. True. Like for example, when you go to the Wilderness Lodge and you understand that they are telling you the story of, you know, mining and the history of national parks in the United States and so one building is this part of the history and the other building is another part of the history and they connect. So they are telling you a story with the architectural design of the building. And of course, Universal is not as good as uh, Disney doing that. But in my opinion, there's something that Universal does great and it's service. Uh, I don't know if we're going to talk about this later on, but uh, even though they may not have that amazing storytelling, they have service that goes way beyond anything that you may experience in central florida for example uh, in the case of portofino and i think that comes from the fact that they are a lowe's property right they have their own branding and they have their own reputation that they have to maintain so they've really upped their service levels at these resorts just going back to theming real quick Here's my opinion, which of course is the only one that matters, is that we've got Universal, which goes for, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? Not accuracy, but goes more for, you know, representing a style or a place as opposed to being engulfed in a fairy tale. So, uh, Craig, you mentioned Aventura is not your favorite. Aventura to me feels like Miami. Right, it feels like one of those hotels you might see uh, in Miami. So they've they've captured that Cabana Bay, awesome, with capturing that sort of '50s, '60s motel, you know, um, Route 66 feel. So this is what they've done, rather than sort of beat you on the head with you know a tremendous amount of um, architecture or additions to the hotel. Um, also, I forgot what I was going to say, so it probably was not important well, at all. One of the things that I often tell clients are the the <laughs> hotels, because they're so close, they also, I'm a, I'm a foodie guy. I like to have, I like to sit down when I think it's a nice break for me uh, and for our family to kind of breathe and enjoy. And uh, sometimes, and I don't find the universal theme park food, all that in the theme parks themselves, the food is not great. Um, but you can easily go to one of the uh, one of the hotels and there is great dining in all of them. And so I often say, hey, get out of that, go to City Walk or, or particularly go to one of the hotels. And because they're so close, it's a nice, it's another opportunity for you to kind of get out of that space and, um, and just breathe a little bit, so. It's not only great um, for 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 that, right? You can go from hotel to hotel for sure. But I really love getting to the theme parks, right? Yep. There are there are several. Chris mentioned this in our previous show. There are several hotels that are absolutely within walking distance, and I say that from someone who can't walk distances, doesn't like to walk distances. I can do it. But then there's also the boat. 
You can take the boat between certain hotels and ride up to City Walk, which then um, reminds me a lot of Disneyland, right? You've got the two parks that are within walking distance of each other and then City Walk, you know, on the entertainment area right there, which is all convenient. And then you've got the newer hotels that are a little bit further away. But I feel like it all sort of works in getting around where, you know, again, don't want to do the Disney bashing, but I feel like for Disney, it could be an ordeal getting from parts to bigger. Park. Yeah, yeah. It's just bigger. And it's I dealing with tourists who are driving, you know, you're dealing with people who are on the road and so things like that. It's not Disney's fault. It's just the nature of the beast. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. One of the things that they do offer uh, for all the, I mean, there are a number of benefits that you get by staying at a universal hotel. Um, one of the benefits which they used to have at Disney and they have not brought back, but you can um, get your merchant, you buy something in the park, they will bring it back to your hotel for you. Um, and I know, you know, there's, it's not fun to walk around with some of the stuff that you're carrying. They still have that feature where they'll deliver it right to your, right to your hotel. So you can, and those kinds of things are very, I think very nice and very popular and, and spur people to, frankly, it spurs people, I think, to buy things they might not otherwise. They also, you can get charging <laughs> privileges with, through your room key and they'll just put it on your room folio. So, um, so that's another advantage. So in addition to the being so close, you can walk, you can boat, you can bus. Um, they have transportation um, that you also get the early entry. You get that uh, merchandise delivery. So there are a number of advantages to, uh, to do a universal, a universal hotel stay. Agree. A thousand percent agree. Um, we talked a little bit, you talked a little bit about um, the newer hotels having the family suites. Uh, Cabana Bay has those awesome rooms yep. that certainly can accommodate a family. Well, let's talk a little bit about our opinion of the right hotel for the right demographic. So um, I'm traveling there, don't have kids, two adults. Federico, where should I stay? In my opinion, Aventura. Or, I mean, if you're like, if you have the budget, um, Portofino, those two, in my opinion. Um, and the reason is Aventura Hotel is, as I said before, is just one building compared to Cabana Bay. Cabana Bay is huge. And if you're staying, for example, in a um, Volcano Bay view room, you're going to have to walk a lot to get there to your room from the main lobby as in Aventura is just one building and you know it's easy to walk around and you have the advantage of having Sapphire Falls right next to the hotel so if you want to take the water transportation you can just walk through the this other hotel Sapphire Falls and take the 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 water transportation which is great because it doesn't um, it doesn't um, take you to the main building, transportation building, where you have to do the security. You get closer to the parks when you take the, the boats. Right. So um, in terms of couples or only adults, I think those two are great options. And, and yeah. I will recommend John, I think that, you know, those kinds of questions and those are the questions that people always ask me when I'm out and about is they'll say, OK, where should I stay? And unfortunately, I always say, well, it depends. Um, it depends on how much you want to spend. If you can stay uh, at one of the premier resorts and you get that Universal Express Pass included with your stay. I mean, that's like awesome. Um, so if, if you're not able to and you have kids, uh, I mean, as Federico mentioned, Cabana Bay is 2,200 rooms. It's more than 2,000 rooms. It's a bit, it's, it's the biggest universal resort. Um, uh, so, and you can be walking and, and, you know, you go down those halls that feel like, you know, feel a little bit like The Shining, right? They never end. They keep going. Um, but it keeps, you know, it's a big place. Um, the nice thing about Cabana Bay is you have a secret entrance right into uh, Volcano Bay, um, so you can get uh, you can get in without having to bus and everything over there. It's it's a nice place. So it all depends on what you're looking for from your trip, and and it's one of the things that I love doing with clients is like, okay, let's find your perfect place that matches exactly what you what you need to do. All right, so let me put that question to you. 
knowing your family, knowing how you travel. Now you have a teenage son. Yeah. You know, what's the what's the place for you guys? Where are you going to stay? Uh, we're going to stay at one of the premier resorts because we like that express pass. And I've done the calculations. Most of the time, um, it's less expensive for me to stay in the nicer place. And I'm going to be at the nicer place because I want to go have a nice dinner or something like that. So I'm going to be up there anyway. And um, and it allows us it just allows us more flexibility, allows us to skip the regular line, which we like to do. Um, and I we we're going to choose to use our budget that way. So um, so all three of the the uh, premier hotels are lovely. I agree with Federico. I think Portofino is an exceptional resort. It is not only lovely and gorgeous, but the service is excellent. I, the pools are great. They have a great kids pool. Even my 13 year old would uh, gets a kick out of it. So it's a lovely place. I should I should also mention that the particularly the premier resorts have these great. So. Um, I think it's, uh, I forget which one it is, but they have a Jurassic Park suite, kids suite. So the um, so the beds in the kids' room look like those uh, things from Jurassic World that they roll around in. It's, it's really fun. One has a minion suite. Um, so they do have suites that are, are very, very fun and take the theming, kick the theming up a notch. Um, so you can do those too if you want. I've never been able to stay in one. They disappear quickly. So if you want one, plan early. That actually presents a really good question. Um, I, you know, I'm not booking these. You guys are in the trenches. You're booking them every day for clients. Uh, what does availability look like? You know, we know what's going on at Disney right now, but you know, Federico, for you, what are you finding for your clients? Is there good availability? Is there good pricing out there? Is there possibilities? Yes, I usually book more of the the value hotels that or prime prime value. Uh, than the premier hotels and um, it's very easy to find rooms available for um, for those hotels I love the two bedroom suites that you can find in the endless summer hotels because those rooms are way bigger than the standard rooms are any other hotels and they are the, the price is way lower lower than the ones that the standard rooms, for example, at Cabana or Aventura Hotel. And with those, you're going to have a separate space for the parents uh, with a door and you're going to have privacy. And then your kids can be in the main area with two queen beds, queen beds. And then you have a small kitchenette with a microwave. You, so you have a lot of more space to um, accommodate a family or four or five people um but it's really it's not difficult to find availability for for those and prices as i said in the other show uh, are usually better than for example if you compare the value hotels from universal to the value hotels of Walt disney world they're going to be uh, better prices at universal so it's a great option john here's what i what i would say is um Yes, you can do. I, I find that pricing is increasingly more basically on par with each other. Um, there, I think there is availability. I keep telling people, if you want to do a universal trip, do it now. We haven't mentioned it in this show, but their universal, you may have heard, is building another park. Uh, Epic Universe is going to open next year. Uh, there will be three more hotels that will be added to the eight existing. So they'll have three more hotels, uh, Stella Nova, Stella Luna, I believe it is, and then the uh, Premier, well, they haven't set announced yet. We all believe it's going to be Premier uh, Resort Universal Helios Hotel, uh, Grand Hotel even. Um, so those are going to be coming online. And in fact, in January, you can start booking Stella Nova, I believe it is. Uh, so you can, before it even opens, I guess, so you can look at the construction site out your window. Um, but um, it's, there's availability right now, which, and it's nice. And they're putting deals. And I don't, I don't know. Who knows what, what kind of deals we'll see next year. I think um, if you want to do a universal trip, do it sooner rather than later would be my recommendation. I agree. I also think what we're going to see is the initial push, the initial glut, is people are going to want to stay at those new hotels. Yep. They're all going to want to be close to Epic Universe. That's going to be the, the draw over there. So I think that you're going to see a lot of people filling up those hotels. And then the other hotels 
hopefully some availability, hopefully some good pricing, some good deals coming from Universal. Um, you know, we didn't talk about this. We didn't prepare for this. So I don't want to put you guys on the spot. Uh, are there any deals out there right now for Universal? And I also want to preface this by saying we record these ahead of times and they get released and they're also, you know, on the internet forever. So what we talk about today is not necessarily uh, what you might find, but what are we seeing as far as universal pricing and dealing out there? Chris, you got anything? I mean, they, they're, uh, I, I find universals uh, deals to be, you know, they're usually adding a couple days free. So you get a couple days and then you add a couple days. Um, and so they can be a little bit more complex than just you get free dining at Disney or something like that. They're, so they're a little bit uh, more nuanced, but yeah, there are, there are deals out there right now. So that's why I say, I think, and I think Universal is very focused on, yes, there's a lot of attention on Epic Universe, but they still have two parks that they want to have guests visit. Um, and so they're trying to do everything they can uh, to make that, make that possible. So. Agreed. Federico, yeah, anything you have, want to answer with the pricing? I apologize. Go ahead. They have 30% uh, off on uh, packages, hotel and tickets for five nights or more. And this is for travels between um, April 2024 and select dates up until in March 2025 and as Chris was saying Universal always have very good deals with tickets so you can find even if the hotel room is not doesn't have a discount you're going to be able to get um, for example two um, park tickets or three park tickets for the price of two so we always trying to find those deals depending on the amount of days that you want to visit the theme parks um, for example, if you want to do a long stay in Universal, they usually have this uh, promo ticket that allows you to go to the theme parks for the whole stay. And it's going to be, in some cases, around the same price that if you just buy four day tickets. So you, you want to have that in mind. We always uh, quote the best available rate, even though if you say, no, I don't want to go to the theme parks for seven days, I just want three days of park tickets. Well, maybe the price is going to be the same. So it's better just to have that just in case you do want to go to the theme parks when you're- And John, I'm just going to jump on what Federico said. Sometimes that's confusing to people. They go, I don't want seven days. I'm like, it's it actually, the price can be better. And if you just go in for a couple, use your, go in for early entry and do a couple and then go back and hang by the pool or something else. Um, you you have it available and it you're not it's less expensive so it's a great deal for you and you can you yeah know, you, even if it's I your found that I use it so yeah even if it's your departure day you can get a couple hours in sure. um, Craig I want to come to you for a hotel opinion so uh, I think you're like me I don't know if you've stayed at every Universal hotel but you've certainly seen them all and and had in depth uh, experience with them but as someone with a newborn or i don't know was he 10 now <laughs> someone with a new baby what where would you stay this is now not work this is your vacation for universal what would you do i yeah, i am probably gonna go to portofino first and uh i i mean I think the reason why I'd go there is uh, the rooms are obviously, you know, outside of like suites that you can book and such like just their standard room is actually uh, big enough for our family of three. And, you know, we need to have room for a pack and play to put in there. But I think you have more than enough room with that. Uh, I feel like Portofino doesn't get enough love for how uh, wonderful their pools are. And we have now entered that phase with our son where he is obsessed with water. So just like the past weekend we had to go to the contemporary for hours just to take him swimming because that's what he wanted to do um and so yeah i like i really like portofino's pools so you get you get a really really classy hotel there but i i still think it's it's kind of kid friendly and after that i would probably jump next to cabana bay 
just because, uh, you know, having the option to, to go for the suite without spending a lot of money, that does add a lot of extra room. And having the Lazy River and the pools and having that access to Volcano Bay as well, I, I feel like those are, are probably the, the top two for me. But I, I have stayed at every single Universal Hotel up until the Epic Universe ones. And honestly, there's... There's none that I wouldn't recommend. It just it, it all it always changes. Like I I would never go and I would never go and put uh, endless summer first and foremost in in anyone's mind. But at the same time too, if if you're staying a lot of nights and and that's what matches your budget, they are well run hotels that are still extremely clean. They have all the amenities you can want, and they are a good price. So I, I would never go against it. Just. Uh, you know, uh, really, really look at everything that's out there on each of the hotels. Don't I like I don't want to sit here and say don't take our advice on it. But like I I know a lot of people love Royal Pacific because it's one of the uh, it's one of the premier hotels that gives you the express pass for the parks. Uh, and, you know, people really enjoy the theming of it. But for me, it's I, I actually like. I prefer more of a kitschy Polynesian type theme to what Royal Pacific has to offer, which does feel more authentic. So, uh, you know, just because I'm not going to be the first to recommend it doesn't mean you shouldn't. I think most people would probably disagree with me and actually say it's wonderful. So uh, just for me, Portofino first, then Cabana Bay. I was just going to ask Craig, for the pools, they all have that easy entry, which for at least for little ones is just, I mean, is so lovely for kids and and for parents because you don't have to panic about it right they can walk in as far as they're comfortable and and as far as I, I believe all the universal hotels have easy entry pools which is is so awesome yeah they they like to brag about their zero entry which always makes the joke fun that it's zero entry because no one's allowed <laughs> to enter <laughs> dad jokes there zero people well i was going to make a joke that craig doesn't understand the point of being a travel agent and trying to make sales we want you to take our advice <laughs> no no no, no, then, no no i yes we do want people to take our advice to an extent and the the key is you absolutely do need to go and stay at universal hotels i mean we we were pushing before everyone else was that yeah. stay at universal and go to Disney hotels. And I know that was bad for, you know, it was probably bad for Disney sales back then, but Universal Hotels, you can sometimes find extremely great deals on them. And then if you already have a rental car, or you have ways to get over to Disney, it, it gives you a taste of what Universal has to offer. It makes it even more accessible than to experience their parks too, if you're not as familiar with them. Uh, and I know now that you know, people do that in general, just if they're visiting Orlando, it's like, well, we'll stay at Universal and we'll use the Express for a day. But we just love the quality of those hotels. And I, I think it's it's a testament to everything that they've done with Lowe's. They have really, really, really made sure that their hotels are some of the best, if not the best in Orlando. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised when you if you talk to agents about how many of their clients now are just staying at Universal where it used to be go to Disney, spend a day at Universal, then it was a split stay. But now they have clients who are like, this is it, my vacation this year is Universal, and I might pop over, you know, I might do Disney Springs or something else. Um, all right, guys, thank you very much for a great conversation. I enjoyed it very much. I learned some things, which is always cool. Um, I'll remind folks at home, if you're interested in booking a Universal vacation or a Disney vacation or anything that we offer, please reach out to your Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. If you don't have a Dreams Unlimited Travel agent, you can write to any one of us uh, here on the show this week. It's Federico at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, Chris V at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, or John at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And also want to put out there that if you have questions that you'd like us to answer about Universal or any of the other destinations that we talk about, please feel free to drop me an email, john at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, and we will curate those and we'll put those together for a future show. Chris, Fetty, Craig, thank you very much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Thanks so much, John. Thank you very much. We hope everyone home has a great week, and we hope you have a great vacation. Thank you.